Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printer here. In today's video, I'll be implementing a database in my simple Chartist application. So just to remind you what I did in the last video, if you haven't seen it already, I have a chart here and I can hit this button to update the chart with random values. So in this video, I'm gonna make it to where the values are no longer random, but instead they come from a database. And the type of database that I'm going to use is a MongoDB because the format of the uh, data in the chart initialization is the same as the data in the database because it's a NoSQL database. So you'll see what I mean uh, in a moment when I get to this. So first thing is I have a database set up. There's no data in it yet, but I'll add that in a moment. But first let me import uh, Flask PyMongo and then I'll connect to it. So I'll add from flask underscore pi mongo import pi mongo capital P capital M and then for my configuration I need to add a couple of things I need to add a mongo DB name and I need to add the mongo URI so the DB name that I created is pretty printed chartists I believe I'm pretty sure that's right and then the URI is supplied by MongoDB or MLab, which is the database host I'm using. So I'll copy that and paste it in here. Username, simple, pretty, password, print it. So that's enough to uh, create the connection to my MongoDB when it's time to do so. And then I'll instantiate it here. So pi Mongo, and then I'll pass some yap. So now let me add some data to the database. So what I'm going to do with this simple app is I'm going to uh, display charts based off the data in the database. So I won't worry about actually how the data gets into the database. Uh, that's depending on how your app is supposed to work. So in this case, I'll just add it uh, by hand. So I'll call this collection charts. And then I will add some documents into my charts collection. So I'll give it a name. I'll call this chart one. And then I'll say values. And it's going to be an array of five numbers. So nine, two, nine, four, and two. Not so random, but I'll create more in a moment. So I'll create one. Whoops, I messed up somewhere. Oh, there's no parentheses around values. So create and go back. And I'll create a couple more of these. So this one, I'll call it chart two. And then I'll change the values to something else. Let's do five, eight, one. Keep that four and another five. And once again, let me copy this one so it's right. So it has to be valid JSON, of course. And I'll add one more. I'll call this chart three. And once again, I'll change the value. So 15, 28, 11, 14. And let's just keep that as five. All right, so I have three charts in my collection. And these are the ones that I'm going to query from the database to actually build my chart. So now what I want to do is instead of having the random results here, so instead of the sample range one to 10 and give me five values, I need to query uh, the database. So the first thing I need to do is uh, get the collection that I'm interested in. So I'll just call it charts because it's called charts in my database. So mongo.db.charts which allows me access to that collection. And then I'll say um, result is going to be charts, find one. So now I'm writing a query and I'm looking for where the name is chart one. I'll hard code chart one for now, but in a moment I'll have it come from the front end. And then once I have results, I can simply do this. I can take away this sample part because I won't be using that anymore. Now say results and I call it values. 
So if I save this and if I run it, I should get the data from the database for chart one instead of random values. So let's refresh. Let's see if it works the first time around. Is my Flask app running? It is. It's just really slow. I think because it's connecting to Mongo for the first time. So this is a little too slow. So I'll restart the server. And I'll go here. So we have this chart here that I have. And if I refresh the page over and over, and if I click update the chart, it stays the same because these values are actually coming from the database. So these are the chart one values. So we see nine, two, nine, four, two. And if I look at chart one, I see nine, two, nine, four, two. Okay. So how do we make this a little more dynamic? Uh, one thing we can do is change the front end a bit. So I have this button called update, update the chart. I'll get rid of that. And instead I'll have a button. I'll have three buttons, one for chart one, one for chart two, and one for chart three. So ID would be chart one, chart one. And then I'll do the same thing for the other two charts. So I'll change this to chart three, chart two. So here's what it looks like now without me having to do anything. So these buttons don't work yet, but these are the buttons that I'm going to use. So down here, uh, it's still going to get data for the first chart uh, because that's the one I have hard coded. So I'll need to change that in a moment, but first let me deal with the functionality for the buttons. And you know what? To make this easier, I'm going to give these all a class. So I'll call them chart button just to make the selector a little simple. So I have this on click for update. I'm going to get rid of this and instead I'm going to do chart button. So anytime one of the three buttons are clicked, I will update the chart and I'll pass in, uh, let's make this a little more clear. So I need to make this a function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever value that I get from the button I clicked. So let's say uh, the ID is going to be this dot attribute ID. So that will give me chart one, chart two, or chart three. And I'll pass that to the update chart function, which doesn't take an ID yet. So I'll add an ID there. And I need to pass in data. So I'll pass a JSON object and I'll say ID is going to be equal to the ID that I pass in. So now I have to modify the data route to get the data passed in. So I'll import the request object here and in the data routes, I'll assign ID to be equal to the ID that's passed in. So it's not necessarily going to be JSON. It's just going to be a query string parameter, but it doesn't matter either way, as long as I can get the ID. So I'll have the ID here and instead of hard coding chart one, I'll pass in the ID. And then in the chart, I have two edX requests. So I have this first get here with no uh, parameter, and then the second one here with the ID parameter. So I'll add one here and I'll hard code chart one as the value. And let me just change the case on these so I don't forget. I'll save that. And now when I run it, I should be able to see all three charts. So let me save, restart, and it didn't load. So let's see what the issue is. So I'll refresh and there it goes. Okay. So this should be chart one. If I click on chart two, I get a different chart. And if I click on chart three, I get yet another chart. 
And if I go back to chart two, it should be the same chart as before. So if I just do these quickly, you just should see me uh, toggling between just two different charts. So chart one again, chart two, chart three. So this is all coming from the database. So these aren't random values anymore. They're all based on values in the database. But as you can see, it's pretty simple once you have the database set up. So the trick here is in whatever app you have is how to uh, insert the data into the database. So what reason is the data going to get into the database in the first place? And then once it's in there, uh, how you store it can make a difference in how easy it is to actually return it to the chart so the front end can use it and the user can actually view the chart. So I think it's pretty simple. If you have any questions about this, you can always leave a comment in the description down below. Uh, that's it for this video. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about any other videos I have, about any anything Python related or program related in general, just let me know. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.